Good morning, children. Today, we're going to look at using modal verbs for precision and for clarity. But before we start, let's have a little practice. Remember, you will need a notebook and a pencil because you will be jotting things down. And don't forget to listen out for if I might make a mistake today. So we've got two examples here. I'd like you to read it and have a go for me. Pause the video and have a go. OK, so our first one says, circle the modal verb below. I've got, look, got to look for the modal verb. Well, that's not even a verb there, but that's a coordinating conjunction. So let's have a think about it. Here is my modal verb. Let's look at this one. There's another coordinating conjunction, so that can't possibly be right. But I think this one is also my modal verb. Try the next one for me. Pause the video and have a go. OK, so it says underline the modal verb in the sentence below. I would love to sit out in the garden, but I have terrible hay fever. This person wants to sit in the garden, but they might not be able to do it. I would love to sit out in the garden, but I have terrible hay fever. My next one says, underline the modal verb in the sentence below. Will you make pancakes or waffles for breakfast? Well, this is a question. It's interesting when we write a question because the modal verb changes its position. Can you see where the modal verb is? That's right, it's here at the beginning. Will you make pancakes or waffles for breakfast? We're going to look at modal verbs in questions tomorrow. Pause the video and have a go. OK, so 7a says, which sentence tells you that reaching the top was only possible for some climbers? Only possible for some climbers. Let's read both sentences. Ten climbers attempted it, but only half could reach the highest point on the wall. Ten climbers attempted it, but only half should reach the highest point on the wall. OK, so it says, which sentence tells us that reaching the top was only possible for some climbers? Well, this means that they weren't allowed. Should means that they weren't allowed. So could is the one that tells us that it was only possible for some climbers. So A was the correct answer. Let's have a look at 7b. Which sentence tells you that it is necessary to finish the preparations by the end of the day, that it's necessary, that you need to do it? The decorating and party preparations must be finished by the end of the day. It feels like an instruction, doesn't it? It's necessary to finish it by the end of the day. Let's look at this one. The decorating and party preparations will be finished by the end of the day. That's saying, well, yeah, we're probably going to get them all done. We'll get them finished. But it's this idea of necessary. And it's this one. They must be finished. OK, one more for you to have a go at. Again, pause the video and have a go. OK, so this one says, fill the gap with the modal verb, may, used to, would, fill the gap with a modal verb which shows that it was difficult to travel in the past. It's something be quite difficult to travel to distant countries in the past. It used to be difficult to travel to distant constant countries. So it's used to be. My clue there is this idea of the past tense verb. Fill in the gap with a modal verb which shows that thinking before speaking is a good idea. We all something think rationally and carefully before we speak. We all might think rationally and carefully. We all will think rationally and carefully. We all ought to, and it's that form there, ought to, that's going to fit in our gap. We all ought to think rationally and carefully before we speak. OK, so today we're going to look for modal verbs for clarity. So we've got a sentence here. 
yesterday the boy could have looked carefully when he crossed the road. So here's my modal verb, could have looked carefully when you crossed the road. I wonder if there's a way of writing that to make it really clear what he should have done. I think could might not be the correct modal verb. What do you think? Let's have a go together. Yesterday, I think I need a comma there because that's my front stop verbal. The boy should have looked carefully when he crossed the road. And that makes it more clear. That's what he should have done. I could have said yesterday, yesterday the boy might have looked carefully when he crossed the road. But I'm giving an instruction there, and so should is much more clear than could. Let's have another example. Write a sentence to show that the girl wanted to go to the party, but she was grounded. She wanted to go to the party, but she was grounded. So I've got one here that says the girl would go to the party, but she is grounded. And I've got another one to say the girl would have gone to the party, but she was grounded. Write a sentence to show that the girl wanted to go to the party. There's my would. She wanted to go to the party, but she was grounded. So she would go to the party, but she is grounded. She would have gone to the party, but she was grounded. Both of these sentences are correct. One is written in the present tense, is grounded, and one is written in the past tense, was grounded. Here's one for you to have a go at. We have a picture here of a cat that it's got, got itself stuck on a roof and the firefighter has had to come and rescue the cat. Your job is to think about the modal verb that you might use to write a sentence to show that the cat made the wrong choice. The cat had a choice, but he made the wrong choice. Pause the video and have a go at writing your own sentence. He could have made, he could have done something different, but I think... The best way of describing the choice that the cat made is to use should. The cat should have stayed on the ground. Or we could say the cat shouldn't have gone on the roof. It's that choice that he made. He shouldn't have gone on the roof or he should have stayed on the ground. Let's just practice how we would see shouldn't. Okay, the cat shouldn't have gone on the roof or the cat should have stayed on the ground. Here's another example for you. Okay, we've got a little boy here who's riding his bike. He was quite pleased about that. It says, write a sentence to show that the boy has finally learnt to ride his bike. Pause the video and have a go. So we're looking at the boy being proud that he's finally able to ride his bike. And I think I could do a really short sentence here. I think we could go for, he can ride a bike. He's finally learnt to ride a bike. I might make it a little bit more complex by saying, he can finally ride his bike. Or we might say, Finally, he can now ride his bike. All of those sentences will be appropriate. The modal verb that we're looking for is can. He can ride his bike. OK, I think we've got one more for practice. We've got a lady here and she's choosing between an apple 
or the cake. So you're going to write a sentence that shows that the lady is choosing between an apple or a cake. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, let's see. She's choosing between an apple or a cake. I chose she might eat the apple, that's her choice, or she might eat the cake. And that's showing, that modal verb is showing that she was choosing whether she would eat one or the other. Now, our last activity for today is a little bit longer and will take a little bit more of your time. So, what I want you to do is find this clip on YouTube and watch the video. I'm going to show you the video, but there won't be any sound. You can find the clip on YouTube and listen to the sound. Okay, so if you want to hear this little poem that goes with that, if you want to hear the poem, you can go and find it on YouTube. Your job today is something that I'd like you to show me. I'd like you to write it up and send it to me so I can have a look at it. This is your job for today. You're going to write a list of instructions for the boy using modal, modal verbs to make it really clear. And the instructions for the boy are what he should have done to avoid the car accident. How should he have crossed the road? You need to think about what you're going to say to the boy about finding a safe place and looking both ways, all the rules that we know. But I want you to use modal verbs to make it absolutely clear what he should have done. When you've written it up, you can take a picture of it and email it to me. If you'd like to write it up on a tablet or a laptop, you can email it to me directly. But your job today is to think about using modal verbs to make things really clear. If we just pop back up and have a look at what we've done today, we have looked at modal verbs for clarity. So the girl would go to the party, but she is grounded. The cat should have stayed on the ground. He can finally ride his bike. She might eat an apple or she might eat the cake. So your job today is to write a list of instructions for the boy on how to cross the road safely using modal verbs to make it absolutely clear for him. When you've done that, you can send it to me.